So here's a vertical antenna you can try. It's a multi-band and it's designed to cover, well, bands originally from 80 through 10 meters, but really it uh, does a better job from 40 through 10. It's called the Ribikoff and it's uh, a 7.6 meter vertical fed with a four to one and then and I've uh, done one or two videos on the Ribikoff in the past. I'll put a link up there somewhere for you on one I've done before. Now, in this situation, I've looked into it in a little bit more detail, had a go at building it and tested it out at home. And I thought I'd show you what I found. As with lots of um, sort of so-called random length or multi-band single vertical antennas, single wire verticals, uh, the aim is to buy the length that gives you a, a, a good chance of getting a good match across the number of bands. So you want to try to avoid a length which is uh, a half wave if you can, and also a band that doesn't give you too low an impedance uh, as a quarter wave. Plus, you don't want to be too inefficient. So you don't want it to be much less really than say an, an eighth wave on any band that you want to use. And that's the idea behind this length of 7.6 meters for this antenna. That's about 25 feet, by the way. Um, at 7.6 meters, it's about 3 16th wavelength on 40. That's in between an eighth and a quarter wave, so not too bad. Uh, and it's no longer than about a three quarter wave on 10. Now that's important because between about 0.8 and 1.2 of a wavelength. You see a dip in performance when we're looking at a, a vertical antenna giving decent gain at low angles for DX, for example. So this length of 7.6 meters ticks both boxes in terms of not being too short and also uh, not being too long on 40 and 10 meters. Now, it has also been uh, put forward as an antenna which will cover 80 metres as well. Uh, from my point of view, you might well get a match on 80, but it's so so short on there and so inefficient. I personally wouldn't use it on 80, but other people have. Anyway, I had a go at building it and putting it up and having a go at it, and uh, let me show you what I found. So originally, I um, I tried this particular uh, setup with the, the tuner about uh, a meter or so from the feed point. It's an LDG RT100 uh, tuner and then about seven meters of Ecoflex 10 coax. That's about equivalent to LMR 400 going back to the shack. Now I found with this setup I couldn't really get a very good match on 15 or 40 meters so I put the bullet and I moved the ATU back into the shack and in fact I used the LDG uh, Z100 tuner. So I ran the uh, this, this different setup but quite similar setup in a sense uh, again, I run seven meters of the Ecoflex directly from the four to one, and then another two meters of RG58 to make up the run of the barrel connector, and that went into the ATU, and then a very short bit of coax to the radio there. And that does seem to work okay. And in both cases, and the case I, uh, the, the configuration I used in the end, I used about 40 meters in total of ground radials. You can see from the little film here what the antenna setup looked like. You've got the four to one onion, and then you've got the um, you've got the wire going up there, and also you've got the, uh, uh, the, the the ground wire going down. And here's some pictures showing the the radial plates I used as well. It's a bit of sort of angled. Uh, angle steel which you can get from any hardware store I mix up a sort of uh, radial plate with the uh, the wing nets and the uh, and, and, and the bolts there so there we go that's that's something I put together and uh, it's it seemed to work okay so you can see there's a, a wide range of SWR measured at the feed point uh, good match on 20 and 10 meters it's a three quarter wave this antenna on 10 and about a three eighths wave on 20 so the four to one transformation doesn't really affect those bands too much it's a good match there on the other bands uh, not too bad uh, it ranges from about eight through to 11 to one on most of the other bands um, you notice on 15 meters it's 15 to one it's just a fraction over a half wavelength long on on 15 as it is on on 17 where it's 11 to one um, um, the high impedances, yes, the four to one will bring that down a little bit, uh, but it's just about manageable. A nine to one could be used, and then of course with this, but the problem is you might then bring the feed point, uh, or sorry, the uh, the impedance or the uh, down to a very low level, which might make it a little bit tougher for the, for the tuner to match, especially on thirty meters where the antenna is just a fraction over a quarter wave long. On uh, you can see that on at the top of that list on forty meters, fifteen to one, yeah, that's another part of the compromise but we'll look at that in a minute to see just how much of a compromise this antenna is on 40. In fact the losses on on the coax run uh, the, the nine meters of coax altogether was pretty low or within a, a db or less that's pretty manageable really. That Ecoflex 10 is quite low loss coax actually on HF it's equivalent to LMR 400 it's not a very long run so providing you use decent coax keep the run down fairly fa fairly small amount uh, fairly small length you can get away with quite a lot really. But the far field plots across the uh, the bands were pretty uh, similar to a degree on 40, 30 and 20. 
you can see basically the Ribicoff is in red. The quarter wave equivalent antenna for those uh, for those bands are in blue, uh, with the same number of of, uh, of radials. Basically, there's no difference between them. As you go up to 17 meters, we begin to see a little bit of a gap emerge, and once you get to 15, and it's especially up to 12 and 10 meters, especially 12, then the Ribicoff has a bit of an advantage, about uh, 3 d or 3 or 4 dB difference uh, between uh, the Ribicoff and a quarter wave on those two bands. Uh, on, on 12 meters, the Ribicoff is a fraction over a, a 5 eighths wave long, so it's a nice pattern there. And the three quarter pattern, which lots of people get wrong, by the way, a lot of people think three quarter wave antennas are pure cloud warmers. But if we look back at that far field plot on 10 meters, you can see that as a five degree takeoff, which is good for DX, that the Ribicoff as a three-quarter wave antenna has a bit of an advantage over a quarter wave and also provides a, a decent match as well which the 4 to 1 on and doesn't do a lot to spoil so overall it uh, looks pretty decent on the higher bands but it's 40 meters that we have the real compromise let's see where that compromise is using WHJI's uh, sort of uh, data and the calculator I've made off the back of that I think uh, in comparison to the quarter wave with the the amount of radials used, which is only uh, basically four quarter waves worth of radials, not a great deal. Uh, I think the Ribicoff is about seven, seven and a half dB down on the quarter wave. Now, it sounds a lot, of course. You think 10% versus 57%, as you can see, there's quite a difference. But, you know, seven and a half dB is well, between one and one and a half S units. So not, not the, the worst thing. I'm going to put this into some perspective. If, for example, we added another 120 metres worth of radials on top of what we've got now, so we'll have 60, 160 metres of radials on the on the ground, which is uh, 16 quarter waves worth of radials on, for, you know, for 40 metres, we'd probably get back around 3 dB in terms of efficiency, which isn't too bad. If we then remove the unknown and used a good quality remote tuner right at the feed point so the wire is actually feeding straight into the tuner and then the ground system comes off the off the ground lug of the tuner we might get another db back so really unless we uh, we go mad completely mad with the number of ground vehicles we use we're never going to completely close the gap i don't think uh, between uh, the ribicoff and a quarter wave on 40 meters but there again we'll probably close that gap to around half an s unit and at the end of the day if we just leave it as it is we're still within a couple of, of s units of a, at the very worst i think of a quarter wave using the same sort of power and the same ground radial system 40 meters worth of radials and we're still a lot stronger than we would be if or well, fairly much bit stronger anyway than we would be if we were using a mobile whip so overall it's a compromise but um certainly usable and when 40 opens up for contacts even into g using a vertical it'll still do a good job for you and finally, looking at the other bands from 30 through 10 metres, we can see that the efficiency is, is a lot stronger. On 30 metres, for example, where the antenna is just over a quarter wave long, uh, we're only a couple of dB down. Look at that, that column on the right-hand side. We're only a couple of dB down uh, compared uh, with a quarter wave, uh, you know, and a quarter wave which would be on for 30 metres. And if we look at 20 metres through to 10 metres, we're between 1 and 2 dB down, no more than that. Again, this is all using 40 metres of ground radials on average ground, uh, compared with a quarter wave for each of those bands. Anyway, so I shoved the antenna up, we had a go. Now, unfortunately, of course, as is the way with me these days, when I put an antenna up at home, it usually coincides either with extremely bad weather as it did in this situation, but more importantly, it also coincided with the bands having a big old poop again. And basically there was a, a bit of a solar incident around uh, mid-morning on the Friday. And of course I got on the air around lunchtime. So Friday was a bit of a bit of a washout in, in more ways than one. Saturday was a little bit more of an improvement. There was a couple of contests on Saturday. Yes, I know contests. Uh, there was one for the, called the Holy Land contest, which saw a lot of uh, Israeli stations on the air. And also the uh, Yankee uniform, the Serbian contest was on as well. So uh, I jumped on on the Friday. You'll see one QSO I made on 50 meters using the FT891. And then I uh, jumped on on the Saturday, this time using the 7300. And I made a few more contests contacts there across most of the bands that the antenna can be used for. Let's take a look. Thank you, you're 59002. 
Sugar 5 number 2, Cuerda de Disciplina Bravo 6, Victor India, contact. Sugar 5 1, Charlie Kilowatt. Sugar 5 1, Charlie Kilowatt, contact. Uh, Germany 5, Tango Mike. Please, Tango Mike. Germany 5, Tango Mike. Okay, Germany 5, Tango Mexico, thank you. Your 59072, 72, Roger. That's a Roger, thank you. Your 59001, number 1. Thank you, good luck. Good afternoon from Ukraine. Your five six, Roger. Germany five, Tango, Mexico. Five nine, Golf eleven, Hotel Sugar. Yeah, QSL, you five nine zero zero one. Okay, good luck. QRZ four X three seventy five, Mexico. Germany five, Tango, Mexico. Hello, my friend. Thank you. Your fifty seven, five and seventeen, Roger. So overall, what about this antenna? Well, it's a compromise, okay, on 40 meters. There's no getting away from that, but you can still allow you to have a bit of fun. By the way, get this antenna by the seaside, and suddenly with that 10 dB kick you'll get, all bets are off. All sins are forgiven, and you'll have a great deal of fun with it. But even if you're not near the sea, if you're taking it camping, for example, say you're spending a week at a campsite somewhere, or you're doing a field day, or you're just lashing it up for a portable use, or a semi-permanent antenna at home, then it'll do a job for you. you. know, It's a vertical in a suburban garden. It will be noisier than a halfway centre-fed dipole. Just how it is, it's going to be, all right? It is for me anyway. It's about two S points uh, noisier than my half wave dipole on 40 metres, for example. However it'll still do a decent job for you. From 30 through 15 metres, it's as good as a quarter wave. No question about it, I think. There's hardly anything in it. And on 12 and 10, it actually shines pretty well. Does a pretty decent job for both those bands, especially on 12 metres, funnily enough. But it'll do a very good job for you on 10 too. Um, so overall, a pretty decent antenna. You can improve 40, of course, by adding a lot more ground radials to make it uh, even more respectable against, say, say a quarter wave equivalent. Um, but I think the one thing this antenna does show is that having that balance, if you're not having it too long, so you lose that gain at low angles, and not having it too short, so it becomes more and more inefficient on the lowest band you want to operate on, is a very delicate task. Effectively, I think this is probably about the right length that you will have to use a 40 through 10 meter antenna as a multi-band single vertical single wire vertical i think that's about right really for this sort of antenna um, it's just about enough of a compromise with a small c on 40 and still gives you pretty decent performance in fact very good performance i think on 10 and 12 meters so overall i think this is a pretty decent antenna some people of course use this antenna as well portable with a single counterpoise wire Personally, I try to steer away from that. Um, I think some form of minimal ground system is needed. I think like you would for most quarter wave verticals ground mounted, you'd put out maybe 30 or 40, 50 meters worth of ground radials in total. Um, I would do the same with this antenna, especially of course, when you're using it as a short vertical, like you would be on 40 meters. The, the tail off in performance on 40, if you just use a single, say, five meter or 16 foot counterpoise with this antenna, I think would be much more marked if you try to use it on 40 as a short vertical. So radials will always help. And of course, you've got to balance it up between operating, say, portable and spending half an hour putting radials down, uh, if you've only got like a two hour window to operate and the need to actually have some efficiency. So that's a decision for you to make, but certainly as a vertical, it does need for some form of radial system. And I would suggest it needs a bit more than just a single counterpoise wire. Anyway, thanks for watching. There'll be another, uh, another video even coming up over there somewhere and click over there if you want to subscribe. Thanks for watching the video. We'll catch you again on another one and take care, 7-3.